and welcome to part two of the No Block, No Problem millinery video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I'm finishing off the polyurethane foam block that we started two weeks ago. I'll also be blocking a straw brim using this finished block. Part one is a prerequisite for this video, so I'll leave a link to it in the description box and in the card somewhere up here. Homemade PU foam blocks are a great option for you if you are just starting out and aren't sure what blocks you may want to buy. However, they are not a replacement for wood. Any other material other than wood will not last and you will find that over time these DIY blocks will start to break down and deteriorate. On a serious note, before we continue, I would implore you to support your local block maker by buying a wooden block directly from them. Hat block making is considered an endangered craft by the Heritage Craft Association here in the UK. This means that there are serious concerns about their ongoing viability within the next generation. So please, 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 if you can afford to do so, do buy a wooden hat block. I will leave links to the Heritage Crafts Association website in the description box as well as links to the UK based block makers. If I have missed any, please leave me a comment below and I will add them to the list. If you are watching from outside the UK, please also let us all know who your local block makers are. Just remember, this is my preferred method. There is no right or wrong way, just whatever works for you. Let's gather the materials and get started. For a comprehensive list of tools and materials, as well as some suggested suppliers, please see the description box below. I'm going to start by scooping out large chunks of the wood filler and spreading them over the dents. This is exactly like filling holes and dents in a wall before painting. Story time! For my degree show at university, I decided that it would be a good idea to create a piece of design that spanned a 7 meter long wall which was also at least 3 meters tall. Because my project involved sticking little tiny cards directly onto the bare wall surface, the wall had to be immaculate. So I spent a whole week using filler and sanding paper to smooth out the surface. So if you want to get really good at this, find yourself a huge wall and get practicing. In all seriousness, the way to get a good finish is to apply the filler at a 45 degree angle to the surface, applying light pressure to the plastic card. You will also sometimes find that the filler is a little too dense, in which case add some water. Fill the dents gradually by building up layers of the filler and letting it dry in between applications. In between building the layers of filler, I also sand the surface. This really helps to even it out. When sanding, I'm wearing a face mask to make sure that I don't breathe in any dust. This is super important. If you end up trying this, please wear a face mask and take all the necessary safety precautions. These include working in a well-ventilated space free from pets and children. Once you are happy with the shape, or you've run out of wood filler like me, give it one last sand and then use an old damp rag to wipe the dust off. Don't go too hard with the sanding paper, because you are at risk of creating slight dimples. As I sand, I'm feeling the surface with my fingers as touch will tell me more about the smoothness of the surface than sight. Now I need to prep the block for the blocking process. I'm going to need my tape measure and pencil. I'm going to measure the circumference and put marks at four quarter points. These marks will then help me find the exact center of the top of the block. Another thing to do is to draw on the head size circle. I'm placing the crown block onto the center of my brim block and matching up the four quarter points on the brim with the four quarter points on my crown block. I also need to mark my brim edge. This will come in handy later when I come to take off my blocked brim so that I know exactly where the edge is. To do this, I'm putting a pin into my tape measure right at the center of the block and measuring and marking at regular intervals the same length from the center all the way around. I really recommend storing this block completely covered in cling film because the PU foam dust is toxic and the cling film will contain that. You could even paint it in a color and then varnish it as if it was a wooden block. This way the PU foam is also completely sealed. 
After covering the brim block in cling film, I'm going to attach my crown block with masking tape to the centre of the brim block. I'm trying to match up all the marks I drew on the brim block with the marks I have on my crown block. I would prefer to use a head size collar if I had one, but I don't, so I'm making do with what I have. Don't forget to also cover the crown block or head size collar in cling film to protect the wood. And now for the blocking. Here is what you will need on screen right now. I've also listed the tools and materials in the description box below. I'm using a mesh wicker sisal, which has not yet been stiffened. First, I'm going to secure it at the head size using my blocking string and rubber band. I'm using my steamer to shape the straw over the curves of the block. I'm not stretching or pulling. The steam magically relaxes the weave of the straw and allows it to take the shape of the block. Here's a tip for those of you who live in hard water areas like London. Use only filtered water for devices with a heating element, such as irons, kettles and of course steamers. You'll get a much longer lifespan out of them and you won't have to scrub at the insides with lemons and sodium bicarbonate as often. You will notice that I'm putting the pins in at an angle. This is because my mesh straw has a lot of holes in it, so the pins need to be angled to hold it in place. The penultimate step, stiffening. There are multiple ways of working with stiffener and straw. This is just one of them. I'm using polyvinyl alcohol diluted with water at a one to four ratio. Please note that polyvinyl alcohol is different to polyvinyl acetate the latter being what you might know as PVA glue, craft, school or wood glue. You can use the PV acetate in a pinch if you have nothing else, but the PV alcohol gives less shine and a little more flexibility. I am planning a chemistry video in which I'll dive more into the differences between the two. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss that video. The straw will need several layers of stiffener. This is totally up to personal preference. I've decided I'm doing four. As I am impatient, I'm using a hairdryer to dry the stiffener between applications. It feels like there are so many steps, but this is the last one, I promise. Once the final layer of stiffener is fully dry, I'm going to use a hot, dry iron over some baking paper to press down on the straw. Use the baking paper if you want a matte finish. Use the iron straight on the straw if you want a shiny finish. Wait for the straw to fully cool before taking off the block. It's done. Now all I need to do is wire the edge to make sure it keeps its shape. I'll put a video on how to sew the wire in in the card at the top right of the screen now. I think this has turned out pretty good. If I was being a perfectionist, I would say that there is one side that has a slight dimple. That's where I ran out of wood filler earlier. But who has time for that? It's good enough and that's what matters. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. I've got some exciting videos planned. Join me in the next month for how to size a hat down, jacquard acid dye formulas, no tool couture flowers and a history of feathers. See you next time. Bye. Look who's decided to join us today. Hello, Mr. Kitten. <laughs> Oh, look at that muffin! What do you think?